Welcome to Good Day Garden. I am your host, Jacqueline Rea. This is my garden. I've got to do this really quick. I'm super busy and it's really difficult for me to find time uh, to come out here with my video camera, do all the fancy editing and stuff. So I'm going to go around, show you a couple of key things. I wanted for two months now to get a wintertime video out for you guys because I want you to understand that Florida still has a winter, okay? It's not a winter covered in snow and icicles and freezing rain or any, any of that stuff. Um, but it's still a winter and you have to understand that winter has a purpose. Uh, it is intended by nature for winter to be the rest and relaxation period. The rest of the year the plants are working hard. They're growing, they're producing flowers which in turn produce seed which are the little children and the little children have to grow up so the rest of the year is really active and very busy and you know that's what people like about it they love the flowers and they love to see the plants all healthy and blooming and everything well but that takes a lot of energy and so in order to compensate for the amount of energy that mother nature has to put into all the flowering plants she developed a rest period that rest period is called winter and even though Florida, I mean, our winter days are 70 degrees in the daytime, you know, 50s or 60s at night. So to us, we don't consider it winter because there's no snow on the ground, uh, human beings that is. But it's still winter according to Mother Nature. And you have to understand and give allowances for nature to take its course and go dormant in the wintertime. If you try to force it to be summer conditions during winter, you're gonna end up hurting your plants in the longer run than the benefit you get from trying to push them to do what you want them to do right now. So I'm gonna show you what my plants look like in the winter time. It's actually kind of almost breaking, well yeah, it broke spring, but it's still, they're, they're still crappy enough looking that you'll get the point. <laughs> Cause that's kind of the point. Cause you know, you, you have to understand that your garden isn't gonna be the Garden of Eden 365 days a year. It's gonna be pretty darn close to it. And there's gonna be plants that are gonna look better in winter, worse in summer. Some plants are gonna look better in summer, worse in winter. So you just kind of have to balance the both of them in order to get the desired effect that you want. So I'm gonna show you the plants that throughout winter, they really don't look great now, but oh my God, they were so fantastic last year and I expect them to come back and be fantastic now. In fact, they're already starting to break leaves um, and I can already tell that they're, they're getting ready for that spring push. Um, but I wanna show it to you. I gotta do this really quick because I'm really short on time. So I'm just gonna carry the camera around with me and try to point things out and talk behind it. So I apologize if the video quality is not gonna be that great. I have just way too many things going on. Spring is always the busiest season for me, uh, just because of the amount of horticulture activities I'm involved in. Um, but I can always talk about that later, or you can always send me an email and ask me about that. It doesn't matter. Anyway, let's get to the plants, okay? So give me just a minute. Okay, so first I'm gonna talk about the annuals, um, annual bedding I kind of have going on. This is my rain lily garden and I usually just put random annuals in throughout the year depending on what time of year is and what planting is and it's usually in the pinks and purples and whites range. Um, so I've got phlox, uh, that purple one right down here at the bottom. The purple one off to the left over here, that's actually alyssum and that's a great wintertime annual. Phlox I really love, as long as you deadhead it, it'll keep blooming and blooming and blooming and then you can let it set seed and the seed will actually come back next year as long as they have water. Um, and then over here, the giant purple one is actually the salvia, which I forgot to look up the name of it because I forget the specific uh, variety name, but it's a great purple salvia that I planted last year. And it's looking absolutely gorgeous and fantastic. It's got tons of blooms on it already. Uh, the leaves are looking healthy and they're doing great. And then I got a little pot with a little more annuals in it for color. Um, so pretty much this time of year, you're gonna kind of depend on annuals for color. Let me go over and I'll show you the, um, the devil's trumpet plant. So this is the devil's trumpet. You can see I've already got blooms coming out on it, which is pretty fantastic. 
Um, the winter conditions didn't kill it back as far as I kind of expected it to. They are cold hardy, but if it gets really, really cold, they will actually die back down into the ground, disappear for a few months, and then come back when it turns warmer. But evidently, in my area, it stayed just warm enough. Um, plus it's got a tree over it, um, or branches of a tree over it, which helps keep the heat uh, closer in to the plant. So you can see, you know, a couple branches died out. I'll print those out later, um, but the rest of the branches, the leaves are coming in fine. I've already got profuse blooms on it, so that's pretty cool. Um, oh, and I did want to talk about this annual. Uh, this is Dianthus. Now this has so far been an absolutely wonderful annual to plant. In fact, I even planted more. So these guys down here are both Dianthus, and this guy... Mm, I need to get a stick. Oh well. All right. So the, uh, this pink one down here at the bottom, and then there's some purple ones out out here in the back. Those are all dianthus too. Those are new ones that I just planted because I was so thrilled with how well the tall pink ones in the back performed. I planted them last July. They take the heat very well. In fact, if you drive on Alternate 19 in the Homosassa area what you will find is they actually have dianthus growing all over their median strips and along the sides of the highway and it looks absolutely wonderful because it's just a pink sea of median i don't know it's it's really really fantastic to watch um so i went ahead and i tried them last year and they just did fantastic and they're they're thriving and they're blooming and they're nice and tall now um, different cultivars grow to different heights and I was able to find some interesting watermelon colored and purple colored ones and then I threw some petunias in there. Uh, petunias I don't really have much luck with but I, I liked the color of the petunias that I got so I just kind of shoved them in there. Um, I've never really gotten petunias to work for me into summer. Um, not in the front yard. I think in the fall in my backyard where it's all shaded, I had them in hanging baskets when I first moved into the house, and they did fine then. In fact, I even had doves nesting in my petunias. But anyway, so uh, dianthus are fantastic if you need a, a annual that's going to last all throughout the summer uh, into winter, and I'll see how long these guys last because I'm not sure. Usually they're annuals, but so far they're perennials. Um, these haven't self-seeded yet. Uh, birds. Um, they haven't self-seeded yet, but, you know, maybe they'll just live forever. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to find that out. Okay. Um, we're gonna go over here. Okay, I got another annual pot. These are snapdragons. And in the center, I have a purple salvia. Um, one of the more ornamental salvias. Uh, the snapdragons were put in the pot last fall sometime. I don't remember exactly which month it was that I put them in there. They kind of limped along throughout the winter. They didn't really bloom too much, and then suddenly they started blooming. So, can't complain, they look great. So this small leafed plant right here with little tiny purple flowers, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what the flowers look like. It's a little tiny plant. This is Mexican heather. Okay, I planted this guy early last year, fall the year before, somewhere around there. It's been in the ground for over a year. Um, last winter, I remember it didn't look so great. I didn't think it was going to make it, but then it came back with a passion over the summer and it's, you know, spreading out quite far, actually. Let's see if I can get... You can actually see where it's just spreading out over into my sidewalk. Um, yeah, which I knew they spread it out, but this is, this is almost like a ground cover. Um, which I didn't think they were. I think they were just like a compact subshrub. So, all right, this is my garlic chives. They are doing fantastic. They are blooming. They have set seed all over the place. So if you need garlic chives, um, all you need is one plant and then it'll set seed and you have millions of plants. I've got some random lettuce pots, um, which I admit that I put too many seeds in. <laughs> <laughs> and with that many seeds and kind of stunted them, but that's okay. I've still been harvesting and as I harvest and thin out, they grow taller. Um, I did want to show you this grass back here. Um, this guy with the little 
pink fluffy ball right here. This is a type of um, savanna grass and it is a dwarf and it has self seeded itself into a couple of different areas uh, in the front yard actually and I really like it. I love the color. I love the fine texture to it um, and it just seems to do pretty well. Uh, it's doing fine in that pot. This is the original plant which you know has a lot of dead stuff on it that I'll, I'll take out. Um, but as long as the core is protected, then all this dead stuff, grasses naturally go dormant in the winter time. So it's normal for grasses, grass types, whether you have muley grass, fakahatchee grass, uh, savanna grass, uh, any of, um, what is it, the red fountain grass and the white fountain grass, any of those grasses in the winter time are gonna end up looking near death. Um, that's just normal for a grass and then when it comes back it comes back um, Really quite awesome. Now, I think the one in the pot is doing better um, Maybe because of moisture holding inside the pot um, Whereas in the ground there isn't as much moisture holding and so without that moisture holding it's not getting as much water and uh, I only water here, you know a couple of times. I mostly focus on the pots so oh and um this is all aloe I harvested. Um, I was actually planning to use it in the kitchen. I was going to harvest all the gel and, I don't know, use it in drinks or something. Um, but then I got really busy and I didn't, so... But this is the parent plant. And this started from a little tiny plant that was in the backyard. and Because I have this giant aloe plant in the backyard in full shade. And I decided to try an experiment and move some of the aloe from the backyard into the front yard. And it worked. I mean, they it took a while for it to get used to the change in sunlight conditions. It looked kind of terrible for a little while, but it it took off. And now it's producing all sorts of little pups and stuff that I got to pull out so to try to keep it manageable. Because um, otherwise it'll invade other things and I don't want it to invade. Um, that small pot, by the way, is full of seedlings from the angel's trumpet. So, um, lots of that. Okay. All right. So, first pot on the right, that is the sugar cane that I got from the fantastic Miss Leslie. And it is doing absolutely beautiful. I love it. I'm completely satisfied with it. Um, the pot in the middle with the big green head, those are my collard greens. Yes, I still have collard greens. The, it was a I planted three collard greens in that window box last year, springtime, sometime, maybe towards the end of spring, I don't remember. Uh, they lasted all through the summer, they lasted all through the fall, they lasted through all the winter. It's like the plant that doesn't stop giving. And look at the trunk on this thing. Look at that big fat trunk. I love it. I'm, I'm kind of leaving it because I'm a scared to, to transplant it. I don't want to kill it. I just want it to live. <laughs> forever so I'm afraid to transplant it but it needs to I do fertilize it regularly um, and I do water it regularly uh, the next pot over it the green square pot is an avocado that's in there and then my monster lemongrass again grasses in the winter time kind of look pretty crappy so there's quite a few dead leaves in it but the grass overall is still very healthy, very, very vigorous. I need to actually cut it in half and maybe transplant half of it into another pot. Say hi, Tao. Say hi to all my viewers. He's just kind of watching me. He's my guard dog. I have another one. His name, the other one's name is Bannon, but he's probably laying down on the bed being lazy. Okay. All right. Next up, I've got a burgundy red geranium. And then I've got this green grassy stuff is my goldenrod with seeds all the way up to the top. Um, I haven't harvested the seeds yet. I probably could have months ago, but I didn't. And then the red thing behind it. Okay, this red guy right here is a type of croton, and it is called a Xanadu croton. And I think that's spelled, no, not Xanadu, Zanzibar. I keep getting that mixed up. Zanzibar croton, and it's a little tiny croton that grows small in the landscape, but it does fantastic. Um, it's been in the ground for a while, and uh, I really, really like it because it grows short and it has lots of color. Okay, my muley bamboo. 
Um, this thing actually spread seed, which I was kind of surprised about. I don't know why I'm surprised at that, but I was. So, but, you know, I just love the muley bamboo. And then you got a couple of stripes of the cranberry hibiscus, which is going to be setting seed all over the place. I got an urn full of mint, and this mint is the hardiest darn mint that I've ever found. Now, I tried planting mint in the ground. I know people said, don't plant mint in the ground, it's going to take over. Well, the mint in the ground died. And the mint in this pot so far has not died. It's come close to dying when I didn't water it. But as long as I put a shot of water in it, maybe once a week, then it lives on and it produces. And uh, so I plan on harvesting some of the mint for iced tea this year. Okay, and then my giant croton, or not croton, sorry, my giant crinum that planted itself many years ago, and uh, it bloomed pretty much every month last year. Every month I had one, sometimes two, sometimes three blooms. In fact, I see a bloom coming up already. If I move the weed out of the way, look at that. I got a bloom already. Go figure. All right. Crinum's doing awesome. Now, I don't know the specific cultivar name of this crinum. Um, like I said, it randomly popped up on its complete own. Uh, I did not plant it there. It was not there when when I first moved into the house. Uh, so I have no idea what's going on with that. Okay. Um, these are going to be some of my vegetables. Now, I have planted a whole bunch of vegetables. The three cherry tomatoes I still have to plant. They're going to go deep in that pot and get caged up and stuff. And then I bought some Swiss chard and some new peppers recently. Um, my three no heat jalapenos, I think I lost one. I think one of them's dead. But the other two are kind of limping along, struggling. They're, what, two, at least two years old now. Um, and I neglected them in the pots that they were in. I should have transplanted them long before I actually did. Um, but if you look at this guy, actually, um, it's got new growth down at the bottom, so... Um, I'm hoping that after transplanting, now if you actually look down, way down at the bottom here, I don't know if you could see this, but there's like this really dark area and then light green area. I had tried an experiment. I wanted to see if growing a pepper plant deep, like you do tomato plants, because you know how you can plant a tomato plant really deep and then get more roots along the, the stem? Well, I tried it with the pepper plants to see if the pepper plants would do it. They, they didn't do it, so... And that was one of the reasons why they were declining in health, too. So I um, took them out of the old pots, put them in new pots, gave them some new dirt, um, gave them some worm castings, fertilized them. Now I'm just keeping them watered. Um, I, like I said, I think one of them I lost. The other two are hanging in there. So we'll see if they come back or not. I would rather not lose all three of them just because I can't find no heat jalapenos anywhere. It was a, it was a mistake. It was a discovery. I didn't know... Um, jalapenos came with no heat and of course at the time I didn't know how hot jalapenos were to begin with and so <laughs> so I'm, I'm really interested in keeping the no heat jalapenos just because I don't like hot peppers I like the sweet or the mild peppers and these peppers were excellent so I want to keep them all right I got onion and asparagus and the little tiny onion back there is um, is one that started growing in the kitchen and I kept it in the kitchen for a long time and then I finally decided to put it in a pot outside. And we'll see if it continues to grow or what. If anything, I can use the greens out of it. I don't expect to use the, the onion bulb out of it. I gave up on that a long time ago. Alright, I'm going to go back to another side. Okay. Um, I wanted, while I'm over here, I might as well show you this guy. Alright. A uh, random plant popped up in here. I think... It's a German giant tomato, I think. Because I think that's what I had planted in here. Oh, look, a tag. Uh, let's see. All right, I had brandywine planted in here. I don't know if you can read that. There you go, Brand brandywine, red. Oh, I just broke the tag. <laughs> Trying to wipe the dirt off, I broke the tag. Red Landis Valley brandywine. So it's possible that could be brandywine or German giant. I had both last year. I, I don't remember where, where they ended up. So, But it planted itself. I'm watering it just to see what it grows into. Okay, I've got eggplant and lettuce. The red lettuce I let bolt because I want to harvest the seeds out of it. Now, I did not harvest any seeds from the red lettuce that I had grown two years ago. And so for the last year and a half or so, I haven't had any red lettuce, but I've had all this green lettuce because I had the seed. Now I have red lettuce seed. Okay, I got broccoli, 
there's a pepper plant in there. These are tulips that I bought because I just wanted to see how they did. Um, this is about all I expected from them. Tulips don't grow down here like they do up north. It gets too hot and humid for them. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what I did wrong with them, but I wasn't really expecting much from them anyway. So, okay, I got more broccoli, more broccoli, more broccoli. Um, this is another broccoli. Okay, and then check these guys out. Holy crap. Um, so I bought mustard greens. I'd never grown mustard greens before. I had never really eaten mustard greens before. I had heard of mustard greens before. <laughs> and I know they're a southern dish and you can add them to lots of food. So I, I decided to try several. Um, I bought, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think I bought seven mustard greens and I think three would have been, well, one is really enough, but I, I like having multiples just so I have plenty. Um, but yeah, so that is huge, okay? Now this is the blue flowers back here. That's the Mystic Blue, uh, or Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. And I just gotta take out the, the dead stem out of there um, and it'll be fine. It's got new growth down at the bottom. And I actually have, see that pot right there? That is, uh, I think a broccoli is in there and then some random tomatoes popped up in there. And I had a patio size cherry or grape sized tomato, grape tomato in there last year. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Okay. My birdhouse with Azastasia in it. Okay. I lost my sage and my rosemary plant. Um, they were in that pot. I lost them because I moved the pot. <laughs> uh, where the pot originally was, was next to the door and it got watered every day and it got watered and it had well draining soil in it and both plants were really really happy then i redid the front yard and i moved the pot because i thought the pot was really pretty and i thought the plants were really pretty and then i didn't water them so go figure <laughs> oh well